Well, Ubuntu has truly hit mainstream these days with malware inside the App Store. Is that a good or a bad indicator of malware, though? Mm, don't know. Jury's out on that one. But what we can say is that one application developer decided to include a BCN crypto coin mining tool within his or her applications. But was it truly malware or was it naivety? Hmm. Anyway, we shall look a bit further about this story. This is where it started with a post or bug raised on GitHub. This application, referencing 2048 Ubuntu, contains hidden cryptocurrency miner inside, and there is a fixed email address there, myfirstferrari at protonmail.com. Aw, someone wants a Ferrari. Better set your sights a little bit lower first. Hmm. So I didn't find a way of complaining about the application, which is a good way for it. It turns out there is a forum post on the snapcraft.io website. Looking at the Snapcraft page, we can see that Canonical have removed the offending application. Excellent. But they haven't just removed it, they have actually patched it, so users of the application will actually get a version that no longer contains the currency miner. Anyway, that's uh, something for a couple of tabs ahead. I couldn't find any other cached version of the page, so I had to resort to using the Google version, and we can see it as a game like 2048 with Ubuntu colors. License proprietary, size fairly chunky, I would say, 138 meg. Hmm, I would always be suspicious of large applications that don't necessarily need to be large. What do all those extra lines of code have? And I'm judging by the screenshot a little bit here, but I don't think that size was used on graphics. Hmm. The developer Nicholas Toom has had all their applications removed from the App Store. And there was a response from them, or, well, it's a person with the name of Nicholas Toom on the ID, so I actually can't prove it is them or not. But good day, in reference with my applications in the Snappy Store, I wanted to explain it was my way of monetizing the software. It was not prohibited in the store regulations. Reading the comments, I understand this may have caused indignation, especially since I did not inform about it in the description. The collected cryptocurrencies can be transferred to the Ubuntu Foundation as compensation for users. By the way, it should be noted that such situations may happen more often, not from my side. Maybe I could help in securing this. Okay, not sure about that statement. It's not Canonical's fault or snappy packages. In Flatpak it is possible. Closed software will always do something that you cannot influence. Well, that is a very true statement there. Can't disagree with that last paragraph at all. There was discussion about the action against Snap Store malware, and Pope has stated, we initially removed the snaps from the store and subsequently republished them without the crypto miner, so anyone with the snaps installed will automatically get refreshed to clean versions. Well, so far I'm impressed with Canonical's response, and they have actually gone a step further and issued a blog post about it, Trust and Security in the Snap Store. So it took them four days to issue this response, and they've stated the practical implication of this was that overuse of local resources on the user system, well beyond what a typical application would be, consuming more energy than would be expected, the net effect is an exchange of a small amount of non-personal information and compute resources which equates to revenue for publisher in question, proportional to resources used. The snaps released by that publisher have since been unpublished and will be republished with proper consent by a trusted party, but this raises some interesting questions worth discussing. Evil, naive, or interesting? The first question worth asking in this case is whether the publisher was in fact doing anything wrong, considering that mining cryptocurrency is not illegal or unethical in itself. That perspective was taken by the publisher in question here, who informed us the goal was to monetize the software published under licenses that allow it. Unaware of the social or technical consequences, the publisher offered to stop doing that once contacted. Of course it is misleading if there is no indication of the secondary purpose of the application. Very true. That's in fact why the application was taken down from the store. There are no rules against mining cryptocurrencies, but misleading users is a problem. And they go on to discuss about the software reviews. App stores for iOS, Android and Windows follow some standard patterns for quality and security control, automated checkpoints that packages must go through before they are accepted, and manual reviews by a human when specific issues are flagged. 
the Snap Store implements both these patterns. Even then, the inherent complexity of the software means it is impossible for a large-scale repository to only accept software after every file has been reviewed in detail. That's true whether source code is available or not, as no institution can afford to review hundreds of thousands of incoming source code lines every single day. Because of that, the most successful trust model is based on the origin of software, not its content. In other words, trust the publisher rather than the application itself. Hmm. Well, that seems like passing the buck a bit. Well, I can appreciate it isn't practical if you don't have the revenue generation behind the Snap Store to review every single file line by line and especially since some applications will get updated multiple times a day. I dare say that what Canonical are doing is actually the best of what they can manage, and bearing in mind that the developer did not actually break any specific guidelines. Yes, they refused to divulge all information, but was it actually a malicious application? Well, it is malicious in the nature that they were refusing to divulge the true purpose of it. But it was nowhere along the line of being a Trojan which allowed backdoor into the system, it was nothing like a worm that propagated itself around multiple computers in the network. It was none of those. By that logic, do I really label it malware? It was not a virus, it was just an application that failed to divulge all information of what it was doing. And in their concluding paragraph, the event identified over the weekend was unfortunate, but also expected, in the sense that any popular store will need to handle and mitigate abuse. We take these events seriously and will continue to both watch the store closely and to improve the security of the platform as a whole. Fair enough, good, learn lessons and move forward. And to conclude on my side, I would just state that this situation with Canonical is by no means unique to them. It has happened to all the other application stores and a simple search in Google of application hiding crypto coin miner does bring up some results that have happened in the Google Play and Android stores. Yeah, these things happen and abuse has to be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. I don't see it as an excuse to avoid all applications in the Snap Store. No, it's just a case of keeping an eye on what your system does. You are perhaps the best antivirus for your system. I wouldn't necessarily trust an application to look at everything, but if you notice unusual resource usage on your computer, then there may well be something nefarious behind that in which case it is worth investigating further and seeing exactly what is happening and under what conditions. And thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.